Oh, hi there. I'm just grating some fresh Parmigiano Reggiano for today's recipe. <laughs> Welcome to my pretend cooking show. My name is Dina Mitchell and this is my kitchen. Prego. Do you like pesto? Well, then you're gonna love this easy three minute recipe that is gonna give you the most perfectly balanced pesto. Not just any pesto, but restaurant quality in Italy. It's really simple to make. Let me show you how. You are gonna start off with 80 grams of fresh basil or three cups packed. And make sure there are no stems or that little flower at the end, which is a very good condensed amount of leaves. That is very bitter. So three cups or 80 grams. I have 70 grams of toasted pine nuts and I just put them on the stove for about three minutes just to toast them a little bit. 70 grams or a half a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano, <laughs> freshly grated, which is gonna give you a creamier texture. Alternatively, you can do half and half Pecorino Parmigiano or just Pecorino. We've got three quarters of a cup of extra virgin olive oil, about 150, yeah, about 150 millimeters. And you might need a little bit more. Fresh garlic, super important. Not the pre-peeled kind that you buy in the bag and definitely not that kind that comes in the jar. And kosher salt. Uh, that's it, let's get started. It's only gonna take three minutes. So the most preferred way to make pesto because the basil is so fragile is in a mortar and pestle, but it's gonna take you a while. So let's go with the second best, which is also probably the easiest, your blender. Out of curiosity, I'll tell you. The third way is in your Cuisinart or your uh, food processor. But let's just show you how it goes. Blender, three cups of freshly washed and dried. I put these in the salad spinner and I did actually let this sit in a little bit of an ice bath for a few minutes, just so it retains that bright color. And 70 grams of freshly toasted pine nuts. Not the cheese yet. We're gonna mix this in at the very end. And my olive oil, I'm gonna kinda of try to put this so part of it goes down at the very beginning, just so it blends really quickly, because it's super important not to blend this too long because we don't want the pesto to heat up. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in now and maybe taste after. And I put maybe like a half a teaspoon. Want the pasta, how much you like. Same goes with the garlic. Just tapped it a few times. Alexa, timer off. That's the pasta. <laughs> so my garlic, I'm gonna put in a garlic press. And alternatively, you can just chop this. But again, this pesto is, is great because it's about quality ingredients, specifically prepared and timely introduced. And that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna put a little bit more garlic in there. Yum. Hmm. Okay. And here we go. Make sure this is on. Sometimes I have to add a little bit more olive oil. Let's see. Maybe now. there too long because I don't want it to heat up. Now, here comes the cheese. I am going to pour this in a separate bowl and I am going to mix in the cheese and then adjust the salt. Now, traditionally pesto does not have pepper in it, but feel free to add some. I usually do. And let's see, we've got, I believe it's a half a cup of fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. I didn't want that spoon. I wanted this spoon. Yum, yum, yum. So why don't we put the cheese in there? It doesn't need to go into the blender. 
it really doesn't. We're just trying to blend the pine nuts and the olive oil and the basil and just enough where it mixes in. Look at that color. That's perfect. Mm, I, I wouldn't change a bit. Okay, your choices. You can put it in a mason jar and keep it in the fridge for four to five days. This is what I like to do. I like to put it in these little freezer trays in one tablespoon portion. So each one of these is about one portion. I freeze these and then I put them in a reusable freezer bag. So I have pesto on demand. Or <laughs> you can use it right away. What do you put your pesto on? Eggs, pizza, bruschetta, bruschetta. I know, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, maybe use it as a dip, maybe as a salad dressing. Or how about this? Pasta, hmm. So you don't heat up your pesto. You put about a tablespoon in, maybe a tablespoon and a half per person. That's about it. And I have 100 grams, which is the ideal proportion for pasta. And this is my all time favorite pasta ever. It's really hard to find in the United States, but it's from Italy, from Tuscany. My second favorite, of course, is Romaro. So, I'm gonna mix this up, and sometimes you need, because you don't want this to get dry at all, so I'm probably gonna use a little bit of uh, pasta water, so you always retain your pasta water. Maybe I want a little bit more. I just don't wanna over dress this. And I need a little bit of pasta water. Just a little, and that's just gonna give me that creamy texture. Perfecto. <laughs> Let's plate it up. Now, some of you may love pesto so much, like I do, and just have a straight spoon of it. I did show you how wonderful this is, right? Okay. Let's see if I can plate this up. You know, there's so many great pesto recipes today. Uh, basil with mint, super, super yummy. Uh, basil with spinach or just made with spinach, then that's not even a pesto, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but sometimes you just want traditional and this truly is, in my opinion, the most perfectly balanced pesto recipe. And I'm gonna fight trying to make this <laughs> rose. Come on. Ah, I need a spoon. love my pesto. Anyhow, thank you for joining my pretend cooking show. I wish that you could try this. 
but I'm sharing the recipe with you along with ingredients in the post. Thank you for joining. My name is Dina Mitchell. Ciao.